the Irish Song and Recitation Festival, home of song, story, and poetical proverb. You are at the Irish Roots Cafe, and I am Mick the Bridge, your host. This is one of three broadcast series here at the cafe. The other two cover Irish family history worldwide and the history of the Irish in America. Oroche de Vahawalya. So step right up to the microphone, folks. Consider calling in at 816-256-3360. Then you just speak, sing, or play your piece proudly into my phone recorder. If it fits, we will place it on the air in a future show. But remember, it's all for free and it's all for fun, and tens of thousands of our listeners are looking forward to each show. And why is that? Because every day's a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe. Reach me anytime, and be sure to read my show notes for this episode on my webpage at www.irishroots.com. Now let's move into the big back room here at the cafe and have a listen to what's being served up today. Welcome to the Irish Roots Cafe. Today we've got another very special guest, and I think most of you who are familiar with Irish Roots will recognize the name of Edward Nefsey, and uh, he wrote the book Surnames of Ireland that came out several years back, and he was one of the first to put uh, surname distribution maps in with his commentary on the Irish families. But today we've got him here uh, on the Irish Song and Recitation Festival uh, broadcast for something special and it'll be good for me too because I've got a lot to learn I don't even know this song I've heard a few people sing it but uh, I knew no background I didn't even know the meaning of the words so this is going to be fun uh, Ed how are you today I'm fine thanks very much Mike good and, and what's the song that you've picked out it's it's called Una Juan and Una is uh, is, is a, a woman's uh, Christian name and Juan is a Gaelic uh, adjective that means fair so it's the fair una uh, and th- th- she was um of the uh clan mcdermott and so uh, her name is una mcdermott and the song is a story of um of a frustrated uh, love match because um she was the daughter of the mcdermott the chieftain of, of the clan who was uh, quite a high-profile guy, I think, descended from one of the kings of Connaught or something. And, and uh, although the, uh, the suitor, Tom Costello, um, was a, a baron, uh, a, a sort of minor nobleman in his own right, he didn't quite make the grade for the, uh, for the father. Well, and uh, he, 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 he uh, frustrated the, um, the romance. And, and uh, the song uh, picks up from, from that story. Well, I remember reading about the McDermott's of Moy Lurg and uh, uh, the McDermott Prince of Kulavin or Kulavin. I don't know how you pronounce that exactly, but he's, yeah. one of, he's one of the only 16 chieftains recognized yet to this day, unofficially, uh, That's by, right. by the Chief Herald. That's right. Uh, uh, and it's, it's the Kulavin one, that, uh, 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 however it's pronounced, that mm-hmm. um, it, it was that family. And uh, the the seat of uh, uh, the family seat was at, at um, Lock K in uh, in Roscommon, very close to the Sligo and Mayo borders. That's right. And I, I, I looked at a, a map just before we got on, so I'd have something to talk about. And it, yeah. <laughs> so, some of the families around there that that are uh, surrounding the area seem to be the McDonalds and the O'Garas and the O'Connors and even uh, uh, Flanagan. Uh, a little bit to the uh, south of them. Yes, um, it, it, obviously the, there's the the usual well a, a mix uh, um, of names, which is quite usual. It, it obviously varies with the area, but uh, 
uh, they're not neither Costello nor McDermott are overwhelmingly numerous in the area. It just happens to be important for the the ones that are there. Um, uh, in my book, I think they're both equal, more or less equal strength. There are 1,850 families each in the whole of Ireland. Uh, two names, and there was a historic rivalry between the two. Um, families, so it's oh, it's kind of like a Romeo and Je- Juliet situation where um, if they had made the match, it would have been a, a big unifying thing. But um, uh, as usual in these kind of legends, uh, death intervenes and <laughs> and frustrates the. Uh, well, that's right. And I, I was wondering, I, I wonder, was there any significance? Now, McDermott was a, a big Irish chieftain, so that's important, and. Uh, Costellos would have been a Norman family, uh, most likely that became Irish over time. That's right. Yes, it's it's, uh, it, 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 it's odd how it ended up like that. I think the sea is is a relic of Mac, uh, and it, it, they went through a phase of being uh, Mac Oistello or something like that. Yeah. And then the the M A dropped off, and, and it became. But they started off being De Angelis or, or something, which is uh, so I quite mutated into. Whatever became Costello is, uh, takes a bit of tracking, but uh, but it's, it's all recorded, so it it can be done. That's right, and I noticed that uh, uh, O'Carrollan the Harper, the last of the great barge, some people say in Ireland, he was buried in the vault of the McDermott Row clan. Oh, really? I didn't know that. What you yeah. thought? Well, maybe the McDermotts are tied in with poetic. Uh, poetic and, and musical history there in a special way, and that might have been one reason they were picked. Well, I guess so, because the song actually does refer to um, uh, the harp in McDermott's Hall, and so uh, it, it, the music obviously was, I think, it's ubiquitous in Ireland anyway, but it's certainly a, a big chieftain would have been a patron, I'm sure, of uh, uh, people like uh, O'Carlin. That's right. You know, I took a quick look at the lyrics, which I'm sure you're, are you familiar with them in, in the Irish and the English? Uh, of which? Of the... Of Unaban. Uh, uh, I've seen the Irish, but um, I'm not. I'm not familiar with them. I, I've never tried to, to learn the Irish. I, I, I'm, the English is quite okay for me. Sure, sure. I noticed one line in there. I was trying to pick something out, and it said, "It said, O oh, Una, uh, it is you who came firmly between me and God." Or at least in this translation, I didn't quite understand what that meant. Did that have a special meaning? The, that sentence. And this is Tom McDermott, uh, Tom Costello is saying that, is it? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it's presented today as a romance, but it, it, it probably, and it is based on a true story, but it probably uh, it is a, 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 um, you know, a conflict between two very proud men. Mm. And I think the girl was kind of like a pawn, although, you know, we, 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 we give her a, an equal rating today, which obviously... Um, will be right today, um, but uh, it does seem that uh, Costello said he wasn't going to go back if he, if if he'd made his pitch, and if uh, McDermott was going to reject him, uh, he was if he got to a certain stage on the way home, uh, he wouldn't turn. And um, but she falls ill, and the father. Uh, Relents and sends his guys to to bring him back, and uh, and this is the, this 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 the particular uh, song. This one, I know different parts of the legend can be brought out in verse, and it may be that the uh, the Irish that you've got is is a different part of the story from from this one. Oh um, yeah, I, I imagine there's a lot of versions. Yeah, yeah, yes, I'm sure there are. Most that I saw that were printed, when, just doing a quick scan, showed them from like 1890s, 1880s, something like that. I don't know how far back it goes. Well, the song that's set, the, the, the incident is obviously earlier than that. It's uh, it's going to be 18th century um, mm-hmm. from the, the reference to uh, Costello uh, being in the service of the King of Well, it, 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 he obviously was in the service of the King of France, which a lot of people, a lot of the um, minor Irish aristocracy did, and especially after um, England turned Protestant, so to speak, and, and started to give Ireland a hard time. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so they, they switched allegiance from going to Oxford and Cambridge to going to Paris and whatever and serving the King of France. And so and, and that obviously would have ended, I suppose, with Napoleon in the 19th century. Um, and uh, uh, from, from, from then, um, you know, I, I don't think there's much contact between, uh, and certainly not in... in stories uh, between Ireland and France. Mm -hmm. Maybe poetically again, you know, as a thought, but it never really came about, did it? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I was, uh, 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 I saw one account of it where they were telling the story and they said that, uh, boy, talk about stubbornness in an Irishman, and I can sort of relate to that, especially when I was younger, but it's like, he's going across the ford in the river and he says, if I go past the halfway point of that river, I'm never coming back. Yeah, and, and, he, so, and he sits there and he get, he freezes to death, not wanting to pass that line because he knows if he crosses it, he and, <laughs> and sure enough, his 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 uh, servant said, "Well, you're a great man. You you can't wait for for uh, any woman," and so he crosses it to his uh, great that, yes, dismay yes. for the rest of his life. At least that story, and I imagine there's all kinds of variations, just like all these other songs have variations and. Uh, uh, all the a bard might add his own little twist to the story as he went along. That's right. Um, I, I, I have read what you've just just described now, and uh, the, the what makes it, uh, I suppose, enhances the beauty spot of Loch K and the island, uh, Trent Island in Loch K, where they're both buried, both uh, Una and uh, Tom Costello. Um, is is the inevitable story of the two the two trees intertwining, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, that's um, that's there, and and, and that, that's an old story again of of the the two lovers with the two intertwining trees. Of course, in this day and age now, when you've got the uh, dendro uh, chronologists come along and say the trees are older than the legend, you know, and. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, but maybe they won't uh, intertwine all the time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's no way to tell it. So how far do you think this goes back, if you had to date it? Well, I, I, I think it's certainly uh, 18th century mm -hmm. from the reference to uh, the service in, in France. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could have started, that kind of thing could have started in the 17th century. Um uh, you, you know, be, uh, because there was well the Battle of the Barn and all the rest of it, and, oh, and the that's right. It, it, um, could even, yeah. it, it could even be based upon a similar theme in a in a Gaelic legend. Yes, oh, I'm sure, and, and then they just redress it in the uh, power of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, that that would make sense, and it might well be that the the, the two trees uh, in the island in Loch Key were originally two other people uh, before before Una and uh, and Tom like and Tom uh, Costello. Well, now how how well known is this legend and this song in in Ireland and England? I know in America it's not very well known. I know McCormick and Patterson have certainly sung it, but it's not really well known among just a regular folk. Uh, how is it over there? I think it, it is perhaps a scholarly type of uh, song, and it, it, I don't know what its current stature is, but it it used to be. Uh, sung in in uh, schools in Mayo, probably before the war, uh, uh, before the Second World War. Oh. Um, but it's it's something now that's kind of on the endangered list. I would say it's. Uh, you, I've only heard it a couple of times in in Mayo, and uh, I got the words to it. Now, is is it sung mainly like a dirge usually? Yeah, well, yes, it, it's it's a, it's a solo. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, but obviously if the school kids sang it, it, it must have been something that that uh, you know a class of kids could could uh, all be encouraged to sing together. And would they be singing that in Irish or in English? Well, in the particular one, it will be English. But there are, there are um, Irish versions. But uh, uh -huh. what the statue would be, I'm not sure. It might have been that they they encouraged that as well. Sure. To, sure. Uh, there's, there's no better way really of learning a language than than poetry and song, is it? Because you, you learn the sentences then rather than the words, and yeah, that's right. Things hang together. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Well, now, uh, can you recite this or sing it? I can. I can. I have a go at singing it. If, uh, oh, that'd be great. 
it'd be a treat. <laughs> you know, I don't think there's many people that have heard it uh, uh, for sure, and they've never heard it with any story along with it uh, that I know. So I think that'd be a great thing. Okay. I'll give it a spin then, Mike. All right. Okay. Uno one. Along the bright plains of May, all oh, the wild ear wonders free. The summer sun in glory shines, but shineth not for me. I feel no breed at twilight, nor I see no light at dawn. But I sing a hymn of sorrow for my darling little one. The lights are quenched forever now in proud MacDermot's hall. The harp stands hushed and silent now within its towers tall. The banshee from the mountain streams forevermore doth call. But my true love ne'er shall waken from her cold and deathly thrall. Along the bright plains of May, oh, the wild ear swiftly springs. Along the bright plains of May, oh, the hunter's bugle rings. My gallant steed is restless now, my strong hands on the rein. But his prancing hooves, they ne'er shall touch the hunting ground again. My trusty sword is in its sheath, that gallant waving lance, that flushed death to many a lion for of brave and generous France. A ribbon from my true love's neck twines round its hilt of gold, but the snow-white hand that placed it there is pulseless now and cold. I'll get my brave steed ready and I'll ride far, far away. I'll get my brave steed ready and I'll ride the live long day. Till I find out my Una's grave on that island in Loch Cay. And I'll pluck a flower of all its flowers. And kiss its cold, cold clay. Excellent, excellent. And when did you when did you first learn? When well, I first learned about ten years ago, um, and it came back to me funnily enough because of the island in Loch Cay where she's buried. Oh. Um, when Princess Diana uh, was buried, which was almost just over ten years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, did the same thing, the princess buried on the island in the lake, you know, and, and that brought it back to me. I had heard it a, two or three years earlier than that, and and that uh, kind of revived it for me. Um, well, is there is there a mon any kind of monument or thing on that island, or is it just something everyone knows? I think so. I'm sure there is a reference to it. I haven't actually been onto it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but, yeah, apart from the two trees, I don't know. I'm sure everything Uma, Uma one is to... Uh, to that area of, of uh, Roscommon, uh, like Maid Marion is to uh, Nottingham, England. She, it's, she's well known. You know the name is, is. It gets put on all kinds of things. Yeah, I saw somebody uh, advertising some houses, and they said it was in whatever the... it is. You know, yeah. you, you do find that, uh, mm -hmm. that people tend to associate uh, whatever they're doing. They're doing a one. You know, it's, uh, it's she's, she's a local heroine, local celebrity. Well, yeah, that's a good one. I'll have to remember that. And it, you pronounce that with a W, Unawan, instead of Univan or Bon. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good to know for somebody who's trying to look at the Irish language and learning all the time. It's, yeah. And I know there's so many dialects that uh, I, I can't even sort that out, but uh, it's nice to know how people really pronounce it. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, as I say, it, it, uh, there are the variants, as you mentioned, and um, I, I do know from talking in Mayo that some of the Irish in Mayo um, is not Connaught Irish. It's it's uh, Ulster Irish from people who were uh, moved out in in the clearances mm -hmm. and settled, uh, became predominant in certain villages and brought their specific type of Gaelic with them, and it's different from other parts so you, you get this kind of mix up uh, even amongst the Irish speakers 
Well, let me ask you a question. I, I, I just did a uh, interview the other day with a fellow, uh, uh, a father Stevens at Boys Town in uh, Nebraska in, in the United States. Have you ever heard of uh, Boys Town over there? Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you seen the yes. movie Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney? That's it, yeah. Ah, yeah. That's good to know. Well, he's yeah. he's researching uh, uh, Father Flanagan's roots and trying to find his great-grandparents, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and uh, he's got some good stories to tell. Well, it's good to know that uh, I guess I guess you know, you'd know you be more familiar with the movie than anything else uh, when it comes to It's a long time since I've seen it, but, uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's just a very moving uh, story, isn't it? You know, yeah, I mean, well, uh, it sure was. But, you know, some kids today haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, I did, did the song about uh, you ain't having my brother? Did that was that inspired by that? Or, uh, which, which, which one? Which one? You know the song he ain't heavy. He, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. Oh, oh, oh. Did, 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 did that come from? I, 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 in my mind, I've associated that with that story, but it, it may not well, be right. that 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 would sort of fit some things, but I don't. I never connected it directly with uh, right. with Father Flanagan or Boys Town. I know that they're. Uh, they're doing a lot right over there right now in Roscommon, and they're putting up. They've got a little memorial center, and, yeah. and Mickey Rooney came back for the uh, really? <laughs> 75th anniversary or so in the last year. And gosh, he's like 90 years old. Good to So it's it's real interesting like, what what some things spawn. Yeah, what what most people. Yeah. Well, what else are you up to over there? I know you came out with this book uh, so many years ago, and and you've got the Irish song. What uh, Anything of interest been happening in uh, your scholarly uh, life? No, really. I, I've not uh, embarked upon anything else since like that. It, it was something that I wanted to do, and, and uh, I, got, I got it done. I mean, you could work on forever through through all the names, but uh, um, I, it, it's enough to understand how things work. And um, it, it's also hard work. I, it, it, it's easier to write narrative than it is to produce data like that. And yeah, when you're dealing with cold, hard facts, there's no room for error. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so I've not, I've not, I've not got any uh, any other enterprise uh, planned in the present time. Um, uh, how's the day-to-day -day life over there in uh, England? Oh well, it, it's okay uh, for me and my family. We, we've got. Uh, yeah, as you know, we we, we changed uh, prime minister, and uh, we seem to have gone very rapidly downhill since. And uh, um, one crisis after another. And um, but uh, well, no doubt we'll get through it. I think to a degree, the United States and and the United Kingdom are in the same boat, at having currencies that are weakening against oil or whatever, and yeah. more so than than the euro. So. Uh, most of our vacations are more or less across the state line, like I will say, in France now. We've got a, a, you can either go on the ferry or, or there's a, a, a railway link, a sub-channel um, railway link now. And uh, so uh, I suppose like you with Canada, that, um, places that, that used to be cheap are getting dear now. But, yeah, uh, that's, yeah, people are coming here to buy and take back, and, and they're taking food back. Uh, we've got some shortages of grain and certain things uh, uh, that you never had before. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting development. Uh, I think you, you've, kept, you've kept the world entertained with your uh, democratic uh, contention. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely provided entertainment. There's no doubt about that. This has been a strange year, and I don't know how it's going to finish up, but nothing would surprise me. I, I do think I'm, I must say, you know, uh, Irish background and whatnot. It, it, it's it's uh, it's an enviable system that you've got in the United States. I, I think it's special. Uh, and, you know, when you think about it, if you're going to have, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident, then you don't have a monarchy and an aristocracy and stuff like we've got in Europe. And there's only in the United States and Ireland. They're the only two republics in the English-speaking world, aren't they? Well, that's right. You know, and, and and a lot of what we got comes from an Irish type of philosophy. No man can stand up and be a king. And uh, we, I guess the, our ancestors lived through that and said, no, we yeah. don't want that. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, so, you, don't, you don't think about it much, but you, if you do stop and think, you say, well, that is a, an important strain in a democracy. It is, yes. I, I, I uh, You know, it's something to be admired. It's a shame we 
that uh, more people aren't, aren't going for the whole the whole package really. Uh, obviously now France and uh, is a republic and Italy uh, and Germany, we all lost their monarchies because they they backed the uh, the wrong war and destroyed themselves. Mm. But there's so many uh, people now. You, you can't really say you believe in equality if you've got this kind of. Um, as entertaining as they may be, and I think that's probably what keeps them going now. The, the various monarchies and principalities in Europe, I think the, the, right. they become celebrities, and, and mm. uh, like any other soap opera star. And, um, but uh, I, I think the US ought to, I don't know, obviously, you have your pride there, and uh, um, uh, you know, I, I think you deserve it. It's, it is something special, and uh ought to be looked after. And uh, as much as it, 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 it may amuse us to see people um, squabbling over who's going to believe or whatever, it's, uh, it's the right context in which to do it, I think. Well, that's good to hear. It's, it's always good to hear a perspective from, from somewhere else because you get so wrapped up in it when you're living in it day to day, sometimes you miss what you've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, heck, I really appreciate this. Uh, this has been fun. Maybe uh, if you think of some other good songs you got, we can do it again. And yeah, keep, sure. Keep the, nice. uh, keep the recitation festival going. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's an easy way to learn things, and uh, I sure have a lot of fun just learning it as we go. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to pass on to uh, to the folks out there? Well, uh, no, just just keep the interest, keep the faith, and uh, uh, you know, keep the history. It's uh, it, there's so much. Uh, uh, Ireland is not. Uh, it, it, it raises so many uh, subjects, uh, and uh, it, it, it's it's a wealth of uh, things to think about and talk about. And um, it, it, it's. Uh, I think if you, I suppose being being Irish, I, I don't want to belittle any any other ethnic origin but uh, it's an education in itself isn't it when you have some a background that you can take a pride in well i've sure and, found um, that out real quick and of course you, you can see real quick that people can take too much pride by thinking they're they're better but that's nonsense because if you look a little deeper you start seeing how everything's intertwined right you yes. go back into history and you see well there were the vikings and the normans and uh, yeah, the Anglo-Saxons, and who knows what happened before then, but we're finding it out with uh, DNA studies, that's for sure. That's it, yes. Yeah, there's so much. It's, it's, it's exciting, really, if we can live long enough to, to get, tie all the threads together. It's going to be quite, uh, quite exciting. Boy, i just like to live long enough where they find something that would make me live for 100 years healthily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't think I'm going to be here in time for that. I'll let them speculate on the news programs, but... Uh, uh, I think that's for the next generation. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it today, and uh, uh, we'll be talking to you later. This ought to come up in a week or two, and uh, I'm sure that everybody out there is going to enjoy it. Yeah, I hope you do. Okay. All the best, then, Mike. All right, talk to you later. That's a wrapper for today, folks. I'm Mick the Bridge at the Irish Roots Cafe. You can contact me at mike at irishroots.com or... Send your submission or your notes to Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Call up and leave me your message or your entry on my phone recording machine at 816-256-3360. Just do it today. And oh yes, any donation to keep this show going is appreciated. And remember... Keep the best of your Irish heritage alive today.